Hey guys, what is going on? This is External Shockwave alongside Chris Gamer 1025 here for the TAP Podcast, TAP Podcast, episode number three. We have three very interesting topics here for you today, such as indie wrestling's effect on their talent, thoughts on James Ellsworth, and tonight's NXT TakeOver Toronto prediction. Definitely the first topic, uh, the indie wrestling's effect on talent is, like, basically how everyone starts. It, it's very important to everybody's career, basically. Yeah, and uh, if we're going to start certain superstars, uh, I don't, I don't, well, Tyler Black is, and wait, no, he's not Seth Rollins, nor... Wait, wait, El Generico is not Sami Zayn. Damn, who are we going to talk? Oh, Johnny Gargano. Johnny Gargano. Yeah, nothing happened to him. He didn't die in a freak boat accident or anything. Johnny Gargano. Johnny wrestling, everybody. Uh, AIW. Evolve. He was known as the icon in Evolve Wrestling and just one of the most greatest indie wrestlers in my opinion, 12 years in the Indies, that's, that's something. I can't even imagine, 12 years and like, Indies are traveling all over the place, and I, I don't. not getting a break yet, I, I mean, it does take a long time, like, I'm pretty sure it does, but geez, 12 years, that is, that's a very long time. I, I, I do not want to do that. You said he was called the Icon? The Icon? Yep, yep. Evolve. Well, they... This man thinks he's Sting? Like, what's going on? <laughs> they said what? farewell to an Icon in Evolve. The icon of uh, <laughs> indie wrestling. <laughs> he's uh, he's the legend. Uh, who who else? Another great indie wrestling prospect. Oh, yeah, I mean, Kevin Steen. Kevin Owens. I mean, great too on the indies. I'd prefer Kevin Steen over Kevin Owens, although they're the same person. I think person. everybody would prefer Kevin Steen over Kevin Owens. Kevin Steen is like, like you can't they're, control that guy. They're it's both not, like, out of control. They're both good, but it's just for some reason I I prefer his Kevin Steen uh, character over Kevin Owens. I I prefer Seth Rollins over Tyler Black because I don't know. I kind of found it to his gimmick. Uh, a little weird. Like, he's just some, like, rock and roll guy, just, like, throwing his hands up in the air, just, like, doing some kicks and all that stuff. You see his entrance from FCW, you would know. Yep. Uh, El Generico. I, I don't know what happened to that guy. I, don't, I really don't. No, I guess. It's weird. El Generico, to me, is... He's good, but, like, he was just missing that that uh, that mic. Like, why? Is, if he can barely speak, why is he in the ring? Why is he like? If he doesn't speak, then what character does he really have? At least like Kalisto and Sankara could speak, but this man, he did not speak a word. All he did was like <laughs> grunt or like say Spanish stuff or like yell half the time. And I was like, what was going on with him? What? What is that? Well, you don't have to worry about it, because, I mean, he retired from wrestling. Yeah, he retired from wrestling. El Generico's gone. Uh, Sami Zayn, he looks like him, though. I mean... People have identical. people have made their comparisons, but I, I, do, I don't see the resemblance. Yeah. Just like Suicide Out. What? Um... um and... Okay. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> uh, thoughts on James Ellsworth, everybody. <sighs> Don't let me, I'll let you start this one off. This, Don't let this, start. this can go back and forth. People will agree. People will disagree. I think it was good when it started. This whole James Ellsworth thing facing Braun. Just being a joke to everybody. Like that great little fun, cheap laugh in the middle of the show when you were either bored or upset basically on what happened early on in the night like it's a it's a funny little thing to get in on the show uh but the, i taking it too far like a mascot for team smackdown live like 
Is that really necessary? <laughs> or it, and no offense, Natalia fans um, too. Why is she the coach of the Team SmackDown Live Women? Why is that a thing? No, no, no. We get to talk about that stuff tomorrow. But like, uh, my question is, why is James Ellsworth in WWE? Oh yeah. Now wait. before I get like you know hate or like any like you know death threats or something, hear me out. Hear me out. Right. You have this guy, James Ellsworth. I agree, you know. It's it's funny. It's okay. It's when you need a joke, a hee-hee-ha-ha ha sometimes, you know what I'm saying? But him staying there is just so odd. Like, he doesn't fit. Like, how is he going to fight if just, like, one finisher, like, takes him out? He has, he, like, in a game, he would have, like, an overall, like, ten. That's how I feel. Like, he can't, one finisher just... That's it. It's over. Don't be surprised. He's going to be added to the roster in next I year's know. video game because he did sign a WWE contract. Yeah, I did read it like five minutes ago and like he did actually sign. There, were, there was even a back. video he did at an indie show <laughs> announcing it. Man, I, James Ellsworth, they will, trust me, they will try to make him champion. Either it can be, well, he's on goal. Oh, he could be on SmackDown because I mean he's already doing. He doesn't appear on Raw, so he's gonna be on SmackDown. Trust me. So uh, I think he would probably challenge for the Intercontinental Title or tag team. But who would be his partner? Who would really want to be that man's partner, though? Hey, we have Rhino and Heath Slater. I mean, anything's Any, possible. Anything is, but Jesus Christ. And <laughs> Cesaro and Sheamus. Oh God. And. The Miz is apparently a six-time Intercontinental Champion now, tying with Rob Van Dam. But hey, that's that's for tomorrow's episode. Um, speaking of, yes, you heard it right, tomorrow's episode. Due to us not being able to get in the top podcast for you last week, this this this, this was our topics, but we just... It wasn't my fault, guys. It wasn't my fault. It, it was my fault uh, for various reasons. It was just too late. This man, if he don't, (laughs) if he, you know what, we should just kick him off the show. Just comment, kick him off. Like, I'm like your your. uh, Well, you're like the Triple H. I'm like the Shawn Michaels. You know what I'm saying? Like the DX. You know. Yeah. Yeah, Right. that, that, That works. That works. Or. In this day and age, the Rhino and Heath Slater. That's great. Exactly, but, you're Heath Slater. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I I am over as hell with the fans now, apparently. That's that's a thing. Well, Heath Slater I mean, is over. I, I, I would have never have that thought. That's over with the fans, so I mean, who cares? And lost some sort of election in Michigan, but hey, that's none of my business. (laughs) NXT TakeOver Toronto tonight. Oh my god. It's going to be a great show, even though a little small amount of matches going on, but uh, it's going to be great, like always. It's going to be lengthy matches, I assume, because, I mean, it can't be small. They have to, is, how, is it two hours, three hours? I don't even know. Yeah, I mean, you usually end at 11. Like, uh, regular so, WWE's pay-per-view, so, yeah. Our kickoff is at 7.30 then? Yeah, right? Yeah, but they don't show matches, they just, uh, you know, <sighs> just talk about what's going to go on. <laughs> A kickoffs, but I don't. They don't have any kickoff matches like listed or anything. Nope. Didn't you say like? Uh, well, they 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 do tape matches. I'm sorry for spoiling your plans, WWE. And um, yeah, they do tape matches. That's before the actual kickoff, anyways, because they don't want to showcase they, it. And then they put it up on Wednesday for up, NXT, no, saying they, they're, they're still in that place. They're putting. 
It's Brooklyn. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, my God. Every time I look at that, I'm like, the stage is obvious. And it says the logo everywhere. <laughs> so they can't fool anybody. Yep, they, they're still in Brooklyn, even though they're literally doing tapings for the next week's NXT in full sale. It is what it is. But if you could please pull up the NXT TakeOver Toronto match card. Well, I know it, but I, is there any certain uh, order? Um, it has been pulled up. Uh, pause. I don't think there's a certain order. It's just listed here as, like, random. Because I don't okay. think Sh- Shinsuke and Samoa Joe are right. going go on first unless they're pulling a, you know. <laughs> what? Unless they're pulling a, what was it, a backlash well, with the women's was... match or, uh, what was it? Yeah. Yeah, backlash. That sounds great pay-per-view, may I add? Oh, wait, no, no, no. No Mercy. That's what it was. Thank you. I, thought, I said no way out. Oops. What? I don't know. I don't even know what I said. All right. Um, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the lengthy thing, at least. Yeah, let's talk about... Well, the Dusty Rhodes first. Tag Team Classic. I can't... Yes, Dusty Rhodes... <sighs> Authors of Pain versus TM61. Woo! Now... Yes! I really didn't think these two teams would make it last. I thought it was going to be between DIY, which I hate that tag name, Life, I hate that name. Hashtag DIY. Do it yourself. Get no, the t shirts no, on WDShop.com if no, you didn't. You can't do it yourself if you're in a tag team. It doesn't make sense. How does that work? Please Tell him to stop comments. complaining and just Tell go me with in the it. Comments. Do you think that tag team name would work? DIY. Do it yourself. How you can do it yourself if you're in a tag team? It doesn't make sense. It, it, it makes sense on t shirts. And that's all you got to No, That's it. it. It makes sense on t-shirts. I thought, I, I thought it was going to be between Sanity, because they're a new tag team. Obviously, you need to establish them as a dominant force, because EY's in that team, and between uh, DIY. Yeah. Whew. But apparently, this... a lot of upsets happened, and that's why we have Zeta 61. And the Office of Pain. Now, I do not like Team 61 because they're, they're just missing a character, basically. They're like guys, they're Same. just wearing like de- default W2K17 trunks from Community Creations. You know? Is Easy to make. Behind? What do you think about Team 61? Uh, uh, see, I relate them. Jobbers? Okay. I said, what? He said they're jobbers. Um,. I mean, that's partially what they are. If they win at Toronto tonight, maybe it could boost them up, but I don't know. We'll have to it see. Can, it can. It very might well can. But, see, this is where I'm kind of, like, contemplating with, like, all these matches except, like, two of them. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, what two. I was going to say, uh, Team 61, they need to establish themselves as a tag team. They haven't really done anything that important. You know, they... They're basically the tag team that you need to do the job, you know? Like, say, TMC, you want to get out there and get DIY over. All right, thank you. You know, that's it. All this is a pain when they debuted it. You know, it was big, but after that, what did they really do? They, they also really did nothing. They really didn't do anything. They just destroyed their opponents, which I'm. it's fine, but it's like with Braun Strowman, just like every week, just basically feeding them easy wins it's kind of it works to show that they're dominant but at the same time there's really no other expectation than for them to just crush their opponents and that's it and get out remember the stipulation paul ellering is suspended above the cage oh oh my (laughs) he's inside a cage on top of the ring no interference everybody that's how we do it. That's how we're going to do it. No, that that is horrible. What kind of stipulation WCW stuff is going on in NXT? The classic what? WCW people. Now, my thoughts on TM61 that you wanted me to give. 
Uh, they're all right. In some ways, I can I compare them to the revival. Uh, good in ring. The revival has gotten better in promos. I will say that they've gotten better on the mic. But TM sixty one, man. Is it, it, when but you, you need, say you when you say something is missing from a team or a singles competitor or a woman, whatever it may be, uh, you can really tell because it shows through on TV. Like, when I see TM61 cutting a promo, I'm just sitting there like, how'd they get signed? I don't know. But when I see them in the ring, I'm like, yeah, that they're good, but nothing to really back it up promo-wise. But not everybody in WWE, NXT, or professional wrestling as a whole can be good at both. And Bailey, yeah, before before the hate comes, is a perfect example. I don't think she's uh, she's okay on the mic. She could do better, but it's really with Bailey the in ring uh, stuff with Bailey. I don't know what is wrong with you and what do you have against Bailey. I I, Bailey. I don't have nothing against I don't Bailey. Know how you Bailey. I don't know what's wrong with you. She's good. She's amazing, but it's just. Like, Bailey's promos, they're weird to me. Like, what's she really trying to get out? Like, other than saying she's happy to be a superstar. Like TJP? Yeah, like TJP. Or some people... Oh my god. Some people with uh, Sasha Banks. Some people say she cuts the same promos every time. Talking about Eddie to get a cheap pop in there. And then saying she's the boss and this and that. Which I understand. Basically, Bailey doesn't have. It, they everybody needs something to work on in the WWE. That's it. Um, but who do you think is gonna win for the for the match? <sighs> who's gonna take we, that dusty classic that Cody Rhodes was supposed to be there? Who to who's to Cody Rhodes? I don't know who you are talking about. Just give me. Just give me the prediction. I don't know what. Last time I checked, he was Cody. I'm just Cody. Uh, but me and you have talked about this. Obviously, not telling the world before, but it could go either way. Either the way, the win can boost up like the hype for one of these tag teams. But. Considering the fact that Paul Elring is suspended in a cage, I still can't get over that fact. Oh, I'm going to no. still go. I mean, the advantage would be towards TM61, but I'm going to go with the Authors of Pain. I feel like TM61 is going to show fight, but at the end lose. I Basically agree. like I'll... a Sami Zayn match. Yes. That's I a, agree. That's a great comparison. Uh, Authors of Pain are going to win it. I think after their loss... They're gonna keep like feuding to eventually, you know, one of the teams get to the titles, which is gonna be Authors of Pain. And the feud continues, but as the feud goes on, I feel like Team Sixty One will get better, better on the mic as the feud goes on. So it, it's like a win-win for both teams, you know? Yeah, Authors of Pain. They're they're dominant. I just feel like they need something to elevate them and winning. Them, yeah. yeah, winning this Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic could do them justice. Finally, a heel wins the Dusty Classic. Um, yep. The Revival versus DIY. Oh, yes, another tag team match. And two out of three falls match, by the yeah, way. two out of three falls. It's an easy win. DIY needs to get over. Hashtag DIY, DIY taking the Don't win. Hashtag that. Don't it, hashtag that. It is a hashtag. Even, even in the nameplate on NXT, it's hashtag DIY. They don't put no, DIY. Don't. They put the little hashtag... Symbol in don't, there. No, don't hashtag anything of DIY. Hashtag do it yourself. Shut up and get over it. It's DIY. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what's a hashtag though. The boy niece. Oh yeah, the boy niece. Hashtag the boy niece. You, forget about the hashtag DIY. What is that? What is DIY? Forget that. It's all about the boy niece. Hashtag the boy niece will be talked I'm about. Tell you, William Regal. He came to. The indie company gave him a contract. He yep. said, "Yeah, he's coming. Oh, he's all oh, he's ready. He's coming to Raw, ladies and gentlemen. 
with the full contract. Full time contract. The boy <laughs> needs. And uh, speaking of about the boy niece cruiserweight division, that'll be for tomorrow's podcast. But I really want to talk about it, but we can wait till tomorrow. But as for the two out of three falls tag team match between the revival and DIY for the NXT tag team championships, we know how this goes. DIY. One of the tag teams, of the tag teams are gonna get a first fall, which is gonna probably be. It, DIY. Yeah. And the second fall is probably gonna oh. be the revival, and then the third fall DIY. And that's when they Ooh. win the titles. That's how it goes. See, my thing. You know, that's a good point. But I, I was thinking that the first fall would go to the revival to show that they got the upper hand. Like they're this, you know, dominant team. They're gonna beat DIY. DIY is gonna come back, get in probably a roll up or something, and then. Then they pick up the pace, and then DIY will eventually win. Hopefully, because the revival with the tag titles, it's not boring. Congratulations to them for being the first ever two-time NXT tag champs. But they could go to the main roster. Now would be the time. Also, for Even though, you know, Vince would not do anything with them, just like the VOD villains. Oh, oh, I hope and they Tyler don't. Green. I hope they don't become the VOD villains. I hope the revival is actually used. I hope so too. Perfect examples, but DIY has to win. They're going to win because they need to get over. Take over Brooklyn too. They lost sadly, so I felt like I crying. To win, you know, I'm pretty sure they're going to win. So it's going to be a huge pop. They're going to win. It's going to be good. Yeah. Yep. Next match, please. Bobby Roode, the glorious one, versus Ty Dillinger, the perfect 10. Now, WWE put a YouTube video on their rivalry uh, saying, will TakeOver Toronto be glorious or perfect? I don't freaking know. I just It's going to be perfectly glorious, it's, this match. Two Canadian I'm people. You, this that, is one of the hardest matches I'd ever have to predict because... You look at a guy like Dillinger, he needs the win the most because... He hasn't gotten Yeah, it. He, he's been losing and losing and losing. Getting over Bobby Roode is a huge deal. Like, Bobby yeah. Roode is like... That, that arena is going to explode. And they're both but, hometown kids, so... Uh, yeah, either way, they're, they're going to be happy, but... Rude. I mean, I think I think I believe he should take this loss to just give Dillinger yep. that little like kickstart to the main roster. Oh, that Mountain, Mountain Dew kickstart! Yeah. Please don't. No, Mountain. Dew. <laughs> uh, everyone likes that. Uh, Ty Dillinger. I feel like he needs it, which he does. But if Ty. Bobby Ty goes I'm just going to be sitting in my chair. like. But if Bobby wins, it's glorious. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to sit in my chair. I'm like, this man just won his debut match and then another match. Without yeah. He doesn't care for getting Ty Dillinger over. He just... No. I, Dillinger has to win. He has to. He needs to win most. At first, just, when it was announced, I said that this would be a hard match to decide. But I think... Dillinger really needs it, so therefore he is going to win. And I mean, if you beat Bobby, it's not necessarily burying Bobby because Bobby's over. Bobby's so gonna Bobby's bounce back gonna from run. it like nothing. He's just, no yeah, one's he's gonna, just gonna bounce back like nothing. Because I mean, he should go after the NXT title after this. Because I mean, it, it, he's Bobby Roode. You know, he's big, big star coming from TNA. So that place yeah. is going down the drain. But the next match, we have what well, we're closing in. We have the NXT <laughs> Women's Championship. Oscar defends oh, yes. the title against the returning Mickey James. I bet it's for one night. Did but... you ever think you would be able to say that? No, okay. I never thought I would able to. I would be able to say names like Oscar, Shinsuke, AJ, Bobby in WWE. <laughs> but Owens. apparently, I am. Or, but yeah, um. Well, I feel like, well, 
People asked Mickey James, would she like to join the main roster and face Charlotte? She was up to it. She said she could put on great matches with Charlotte. I feel like this won't be the last time we see uh, Mickey James, but oh, man. she w- this. I'm kidding with that right. response. This man, let me stop. I'm kidding. Anyways, Mickey James. Of course, she's not gonna beat Oscar. But in the back of your mind, or some people's mind, they would want to see that. But the flat out truth is, she won't do it. No. Oh. We're just going to expect a great match. I can't wait for her theme song because I know for a fact she's not going to have the theme song she once had before. Aw, oh, man. I like that theme song. <laughs> this What? I uh, really did. It was catchy, too. That, that thing. It's catchy. And, and the generic finger taunt coming out the curtain, pointing at the crowd like, it yeah. Better, okay? It doesn't work with that man named Oni Lorkin, whatever his name is. Excuse he me. looks like a W2K17 My Career, like, superstar, like, Baron Blade, you know? Oh, uh, that man made a return to this year's game, so, he, he, ooh, he, he's, Baron Blade's doing good. He went back to the Indies and came back two years later in W2K17. Mm, Asuka's gonna win the Empress of Tomorrow, boom, that match is done, right? Yeah, so, yeah I mean, there's no other way around it. They're, maybe we're gonna see Mickey later. Maybe they're, they're probably. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're probably gonna tear it up. Probably be. I'm gonna say an okay match. I don't think it's gonna be like match of the night. I could be proven wrong, but I don't think so. I think all these matches probably gonna be match of the night. I can't say much about Team 61 versus Authors of Pain, but the other matches, yeah. If you want my honest opinion, the match of the night. I feel like it's going to be Bobby Roode and Ty Dillinger. Yeah, I have the a feeling The crowd's going to be... People have seen Nakamura versus Joe before. Yeah. Um, Oscar, Oscar. So, but Bobby has a huge following. Dillinger has a huge following. Everybody's just going to blow up. It's their hometown. Yep. Oh, it's over. It, that, I feel like it's going to be match of the night. I'm already getting chills and goosebumps on my arms just thinking about it. But... We have, for the main event... Shinsuke Nakamura versus Samoa Joe. This is an obvious one. The title is not going to go back to Joe. It will go back that. to Joe. What? You, no, no, no. Uh, the King of Strong style. Uh, of course, it's going to be Shinsuke. I feel like he's going to have a lengthy run, as well as Finn Balor. Probably not break it. I'm not sure. But I feel like he's going to hold on to it for quite a while. But we all know Shinsuke is going to win. Like, hands down. He's going to beat Joe. But my real question, who's coming after Nakamura after, uh, Bobby you know, Roode. some old... It's easy, Bobby Roode. This man said Bobby I'm Roode. I'm telling you, this there's nobody Bobby. else. This man said Bobby I don't, they might, they're like, I would say they're kind of working towards the main roster for him, but challenging for an IC title, like really, is there anybody, anybody going to believe that Dillinger has a chance against Nakamura? Is anybody going to believe that? Exactly why that could be a good match. Some people will think, oh yeah, Ty Dillinger's going to finally get his moment, but eventually he'll lose to Shinsuke. Even though he'll lose, I don't Yeah. But Bobby, I'm telling you, it's early that he came in the company, but look at guys like Kevin Owens. He won the title early. Not saying Root is going to win the title. Stayed in NXT for six months, the shortest shot. person. <laughs> uh, I think that, no, from Balor, did he... Was it a long time since Finn Balor got his championship? I don't even yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was, it, was it a long time? He won it at uh, Beast in the East. Kept it, uh, yes, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, though? till a live I'm event. Saying, when did he debut? Um, uh, I, let's see, KO debuted in December. I want to say June? Sometime in June. I, I'm, I'm pretty confident with that when he teamed up with Hideo. And then, like, what? How many months later he got his NXT title? I have no idea. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I'm saying Bobby Roode. He's going to come after Nakamura next. Cer- certainly can't be Aries. No, nah, Aries... Man, man but Roderick's strong, though, but he's not going to go for the title. Because they need to build him up first. Like, you can't just... 
you know, just throw him in there, feed him to the lion, you know, you got to build that guy up first, get him a huge following, and then he can challenge for the title. But until then, I'm telling you it's going to be Bobby Roode for the NXT title. It's not mm-hmm. going to win. Probably not. Maybe at the end, but I'm saying not. Most, you most know, likely. Since, you know. But my question, also, another one, just popped up while talking about it. What happens to Samoa Joe? I don't feel like he's going to the main roster just yet. It's weird to say, but I don't feel like I don't feel like it's gonna happen after Toronto. They've been talking about bringing him up after, you know, the the NXT bringing him up to the main roster. But I don't know. I don't know how they're gonna debut debut him. I don't know how they're gonna do it. But somehow, some way, he's gonna be in the main roster. And yeah, but they've been having a lot of talks about him going to the main roster. Hey, best bet, throw him in there at the Royal Rumble, and then we could go from there. That's a long. Oh, wait, that's not really. Yeah, yeah November. Um, two months. Oh, hey, never mind. You, you just throw him in a side rivalry with I don't know Roderick Strong for being uh Andy Darling who thinks the that they w- can come in. Are you talking about NXT or the main roster? What do you? I'm talking about Samoa Joe in general, like, and in oh, NXT, like, no, NXT, all right. debuting I mean, yeah, in the Rumble, to see. But, but yeah. Aren't they going to be both heels, though? Aren't they both heels? I, I mean, I don't know. People love uh, Roddy. Or you could just, Dillinger. I don't, I don't know. Dillinger sends him packing to the Rumble. Just like uh, Aerie sent Corbin packing into the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania 32. Uh, and he won. So, you know, it, that's, that's, the, that's the lone wolf. That's Corbin, man. That, that would be another win. big win for Ty Dillinger. Uh, that, that, you know, actually speaking about that, that could elevate him to actually challenging Nakamura after defeating Bobby and Samoa Joe. WWE, just book it. That's it. No question tax. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's basically we ran through the whole card. That's basically our predictions. If any like let's say kickoff matches happen that we just so happen to not know because they don't post anything about that, yep. then I mean we'll just think about it in our head because we can't <laughs> watch the show. I mean we can't really go back to the podcast. I'm I'm, I'm assuming something's gonna happen between Lib Morgan. Billy Kay, probably Kate Norris, one, all of them. Yeah, Ember Moon, probably... Did they say, like, a six-woman tag? Yep. Ember Moon. And, and Billy. With, like, two people, and then, like, a mystery partner with another two people? I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce. And didn't you say Cedric Alexander was supposed to face somebody, or... No, or was that, no, I no? thought they were gonna make it happen. Cedric versus Amos at Toronto, and, like, you know, the non-televised match before the pre-show, but I don't think so. But that happened this it happened this past Wednesday, so probably not. Or Amos, man, I'm telling you. But yeah, that's really our predictions. That's really what we think what's gonna happen in the show. This is basically it. Tomorrow we're gonna have another podcast. Obviously talking about the fallout of NXT Takeover Toronto. We're gonna talk about predictions for Survivor Series. Oh yeah. SmackDown and Raw. That's gonna be pretty Fan- big one. Fantasy Warfare just got real people. Love these promotion names. Phase. Love anyway, these promotion guys, names. We need we we need help. We got two topics for tomorrow. Usually we do three per you know podcast. We're giving you guys a choice. Okay. We need what you. What topic would you want us to talk about for tomorrow? Leave your comment down below telling us a topic that you want us to talk about, and we'll see. Whoever, let's say, if two people pick. Uh, topic, let's say, uh, I don't know, just some random thing. Bobby Roode. I don't know. Just being random. Throwing it out there. Okay? Two people pick that, and then let's say ten people picked a topic with uh, IWGP. Then we're going to talk about IWGP, because it has more votes. So Ma- Majority rules, basically. Yeah, majority rules, basically. So pick a topic that you know that you want us to hear about, and just... Yeah, and this is this is from us to you, especially. Uh, it's anything, anything. It's so openly, uh, you what what's on your mind, and also feel free to talk about 
anything we talked about on any podcast. Give us your thoughts on it because we would like to know your views on certain things as well. But this has been the TAP Tap Podcast episode number three. Stick around because tomorrow we will have the fourth TAP Tap Podcast. And yeah, enjoy NXT TakeOver Toronto tonight. Only available on the WWE Network for $9.99. Again, you're welcome, WWE and Triple H. I thought it was free. What? Well, I mean, yeah, free for the first month, but you get the point.